So in this video, we're going to be learning how to create our own simple application that follows users back on our Twitter account. We can't follow users back in real time because Twitter's disabled that functionality. But what we can do instead is we can run our bot every so often and we can pick either a single user or a selection of users at random to follow back. This might be something you want to incorporate on your Twitter account because it gives you an extra way to show appreciation to the people that actually follow your Twitter account by picking some at random and following them back. It also gives you an extra level of interaction with your followers without having to do anything beyond create the initial application. So for this video, we're going to be using Python to create our application. We're going to be running it on the internet, so we're going to create a droplet on DigitalOcean. We're going to create an Ubuntu 16.04 droplet. We're going to choose the cheapest one, which is just $5 a month. We'll pick anywhere. It doesn't really matter for this video. And what we'll do is we'll also enable IPv6, just in case the Twitter API ever changes to only allow IPv6. Obviously that will be a good while in the future, but we want to be prepared just in case. And here we'll give our server a name. So let's click create on that. As you can see now, our droplet's been created, so we'll just wait for that to be done. So now that our droplet's been created, let's log into it. So there we are, we've logged into our droplet for the first time. So now that we've logged into the droplet, we need to create an application on Twitter which will allow us to access the Twitter API. To be able to follow people back, we need to use the Twitter API. And to be able to use the Twitter API, we need to create an application on Twitter which will allow us to authenticate with the Twitter API. So to do that, what we do is we go to apps.twitter.com and we click create new app. So we need to give our application a name. We're going to call it how code follow back. We'll give it a description and we need to give it a website so we'll just put in uh, followback.hico.org and then we accept the agreement and we click create your Twitter application. And if you get this error about the URL format, we just need to put in HTTP at the start of it. So our application has just been created and this will allow us to authenticate with the Twitter API. We need to go to keys and access tokens and we have our consumer key and our consumer secret. We also need another key or token as it's called called an access token and we get that down here we click create my access token so we have our consumer key we have our consumer secret we have our access token and our token secret and that's all we need to authenticate with the twitter api the next thing we need is a special python library which makes using the twitter api a lot easier and we're going to use something called tweepy so to get this library tweepy what we can do is we can go to clone or download and we can get the zip file location and download it to our server or we can install it using a special python program called pip and by using pip, it will also install TweetPie's dependencies, whereas downloading the zip file won't. So we're going to use pip. So we're going to type in pip, and you can see it's not currently installed. If we use the command pip, that will install modules for Python 2. So we want to say pip3, and that's also not installed, but that's what we're going to use to use Python 3. So we're going to copy that, paste it down here, and install this. And now we're going to say pip3 install tweetpy so now if we say python 3 and we say import tweetpy you can see we get no errors which means that it worked so what we're going to do is create a new file call it followback.py the first thing we're going to do is import tweetpy then we're going to go back to twitter we're going to scroll up and we're going to get our api key we're going to copy that we'll say consumer key is equal to that copy the consumer secret and we're going to copy the access token and finally copy the token secret so the next thing we want to do is we want to say auth is equal to tweepy dot o auth handler which is a method we're going to use to pass in the consumer key and the consumer secret because that authenticates us with our app and we authenticate with our app using oauth the next thing we have to do is authenticate our specific Twitter account, which in this case is the Heiko Twitter account, with our app. And that's what we use the access key for. So we want to say auth.set access token. And we want to pass in our access token and our access token secret. And then what we want to do is create a variable called API and set it equal to tweepy.api. And then we want to pass in our authentication. So now in the API variable, we have an instance of the Twitter API and we can use that to actually query anything we want. So let's just run this for now and see do we get any errors. We'll say python3 followback.py. So the reason for that error was just because the API method is actually in capitals. So now we're ready to grab the list of followers. So to get the list of followers, what we're going to do is we'll say followers 
is equal to tweepy.cursor. This cursor method is a handy method that means we don't have to worry about Twitter's pagination because if you have a lot of followers, they're going to be shown on multiple pages on, a, on the normal Twitter website. And the API is actually the same. It's going to show you only a snippet of the number of users and then you have to deliberately tell it which page you want to see. So using tweepy.cursor allows the API to take all that away from us and it means we don't have to worry about any of that. So I can say tweepy.cursor, I can pass it api.followers and I can say dot items to get all of the items. I can say dot items 100 for example and that will limit the number of items returned. So in this case the number of followers will be limited to 100 or I can put in any number I want there. I can also use uh, dot pages and things like that instead of dot items. And what we'll do is we will print followers and we'll run that and you can see we get this special object. So if we iterate through that object using a for loop like this and then we save it and run it you can see we get information returned about every single Twitter follower which doesn't appear to be very useful at the minute. So instead of printing the entire follower object we can say a follower dot screen name to get that property from it. Run that and you can see we get, a, we get the uh, screen names of all of the followers of the Heiko Twitter account. So now instead of just printing out their names, we want to follow them back. So I don't want to follow all of them every time we have a new follower because if you had a lot of followers, Twitter could ban your account for following too many people. To fix that, what we'll do is we will scroll up to the top and we will import the random library on Python. And then what we'll do is we'll say num is equal to random dot rand int to get a random number between the range of zero and nine. And then below that, what we'll do is we'll say if, if num is equal to one, for example. So using this method, we'll follow it about one in 10 users. So what we'll do is we'll say if num equals one follower dot follow. And then underneath here, what we can do is we can just say so what we're doing is we're following 1 in 10 users and then we're just printing out the name of the user that we followed. So let's run this again, but before we run it, we'll go to the Heiko Twitter account, we'll refresh. And as you can see, the Twitter account isn't actually following anyone at the minute. And um, what I'm going to do is just run our followback script. And as you can see, in this instance, it followed two people. If I refresh the Twitter account, you can see it now says Heiko is following two people. If I run it again, we're going to follow another certain number of people. We could potentially follow every single high code follower, but because we're generating a random number between zero and nine, there's a one in 10 chance that we'll follow someone. So we should end up following about 10% of the users. So now to get this to run automatically, what we can do is we can set cron tab minus E to create a cron job. And since this is the first time we've run it, I'm going to choose nano as the editor. And what we want to do is paste our cron job in here. And what this says is once per day at the time of nine o'clock at night, we're going to run this command, which is python three slash root slash follow back.py. Save that. And that's pretty much it. We could even decrease that, increase that, whatever we wanted to do by increasing the range of the random numbers that are generated. We could decrease the amount of people we follow and by shortening the range we could increase the amount of people we follow. By increasing the possible range of random numbers that are generated we could follow less people and by decreasing the range we could follow more people. So hopefully this is useful. That's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Facebook and I'll see you next time.